What's going on, people? Once again, it's Glendon Cameron with the third session of how to make $3,000 to $5,000 your first month on eBay and Amazon. We're going to jump into it. How to feed the beast. From the first two sessions, I have gave you copious amounts of ways to find out what's good to sell. There are a ton of people on YouTube that it's ridiculous that you can literally sit down, watch their videos for just a few weeks, you know, today, you know, going back, go back to session two, I've got some guys. And the cool thing about that is those guys will lead you to other guys. And every time that they put something up or talk about something, don't get mad if they don't mention the price or whatever. Look at the item and look it up. And if you can get good coin, whatever that may be for your parameters, go out and get it. Go to the automation tool for Craigslist and don't stop there. You know, continue to look for it, continue to go to raw sales. But the big deal is, and I didn't have to face this frequently. It happened during tax season. But my process in the storage auction business was the converse of what I'm telling you to do. Because I would go out and buy a unit and it was a big mystery. You know, you'll see a few clues. So it was buy unit, get stuff, and then sell. What you're doing is research, analyze, then go out and buy items that rank high and do well, and then put them through your sales pipeline. So it's it's a little different. The thing with the storage auctions was I got so much stuff so cheap. Even the losers were not a problem because of the winners. If you buy a unit for a hundred bucks, two hundred dollars, maybe five hundred bucks, and there's one item in there that you can sell for that amount of money, it's a it's a winning unit. And the rest is all gravy. And that happened frequently. Most of the time, in fact. But go to session one, review them, they'll be on the tabs. And now let's put this together. Let's learn how to feed the beast. I had to really think about this. I've helped some people with this, and I'm going to give you a new recommendation that just makes sense from a data standpoint. Now, for those of you that don't know, fulfilled by FBA is fulfilled by Amazon, and MF is merchant fulfilled. That's when you sell on Amazon yourself. What's going on right now is Amazon is big 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 on customer service and once you get past 150 300 packages a month you might run into some customer service issues if you are a loan shop that's a problem i mean it is it's ridiculous and i'm going to give you a, a personal experience something that happened just this week uh, it was my birthday so i was buying myself stuff and I got a watch, and I actually got two. And I ended up sending both back. I bought one from a seller that was using Amazon FBA, and I bought one directly from the seller, Merchant Fulfilled. And they both had issues. The first one was too small for my wrist, sent that back. The second one had a rip in the rubber strap. And from I'm, I'm just giving you the orientation and perspective of a customer dealing with the two different platforms. If you are an Amazon FBA, and I will make you know be totally var unvarnished with you, Amazon FBA is not easy. It's not rocket scientist. It's not rocket science, but there are certain steps and things you have to do. But it's not as easy as some people have you believe. But it's worth it. And going back to I, I sent the uh, the watch back. I sent it back the same day I got it. Packed it up, went to Amazon, fill out the return form printed up a shipping labor, went to the UPS store, slapped that bad boy on about 3.30. Around, I woke up the next morning, I had an email, hey, we received the watch back and your, your, uh, re your refund is being processed. And the money was back on my credit card in like two days. Second watch, merchant fulfilled. I had to go through their... You know, I had to go online, fill out my, you know, what was wrong. I actually took a picture of the damage and I actually emailed that to him. And 
I had to pay 13 bucks for the shipping to get it back. And the watch was defective. And I sent him a picture. And, you know, I know I'm not going to push it in that crazy over 13 bucks. But the whole thing is it kind of sours my experience that if I buy from Merchant Fulfill, because I am spoiled with Amazon Prime, that they're kind of leading me and many others around this trough until if something goes wrong, it's going to be a much easier experience to deal with Prime. And that's your issue. You're dealing with that expectation that Amazon and eBay are both building that if you're an occasional seller, you're only shipping three, four, five, six items a week. Yeah, you, you could do it easy. But when you get into the multiples, a few hundred, a few thousand, you got to have a system, a process. And if anything goes through the crack and see, this is the thing that I think is really, really unfair. You can have a person and, you know, neither one of the sellers, I'm not going to ding them. Shit happens. I'm not a crazy person. I'm not going to go leave some scathing review. It's like it didn't work out. I get my money back and we move on. And that's where most people are. But when you deal with that psychopathical buyer who's like, oh, God, I spent twenty dollars and it wasn't perfect. And I had to go to the post office and I had to spend three. They're going to mess up your feedback and they're going to mess up your rating and put your account in jeopardy. And it doesn't take many. eBay, it takes more than Amazon. Amazon is very unforgiving. So just to let you know, there's a certain ratio. You know, if you sell 100 items and you have one a month, you're good. You sell 10 items a month, you have one a month, they will get rid of you. So Amazon, you know, using the FBA program, long as you list your items accurately and honestly, so there's no, you know, you want to kind of undersell. So if they're like, wow, this is actually better than the description. You want that because if you sell it and they feel that it's less than the subscription, I mean, the uh, description, that's when people will ding you. That's when people will do crazy stuff. So the big thing is Amazon FBA helps protect your seller rating because they get it fast. They have less issues to deal with. Two, it is like hiring someone for pennies on the dollar. When we decide, when we couldn't take eBay anymore because it was becoming unwelly, and we looked at, we, we actually hired some people, trained them, and I was just like, I need to get some of those good eBay people because back in the day, you could just tell. The, I mean, the folks would just freak out if they got a negative sum, and I found four of those people, and I just ran a lot of stuff through their accounts. So I had my own, you know, fulfillment process that I created myself. And, you know, it was just buy a unit, go through the unit, put stuff over here, make sure it was clean. Oh, this is, you know, do an inventory sheet and take it to the people. They did the shipping. They collected the money. They dealt with all the issues because eBay was a bitch. So I know from a personal experience that it is definitely a time saver will help grow your business. There are some thorns on the rose, but in compared to the blossoms, they're minor, in my opinion. So, you know, not to oversell Amazon FBA, but from a standpoint of protecting your account, from a standpoint of being more efficient, and a standpoint of if you purposely scout just for FBA, you can send them as much stuff as you can find. So, you don't have an inventory warehousing bottleneck in your business. And if you've been a long time subscriber to my channel, I've always preached your business is only going to get as big as your infrastructure. Now, before we go all crazy on Amazon FBA, I'm going to give you some parameters. As you start now, if you're like, you know, three to five thousand and you could do that very easily. Once you start getting to. 30,000 a month consistently, 50,000, 60,000, 100,000. At this point, you have revenue and you need to start building your own website, doing some marketing, learning, you know, because the thing is, don't stop sending to Amazon FBA. But in case Amazon says, you know what, we don't like you, they change the rules, they do something you still have another channel. So what I'm telling you right now is to get yourself to the point, use their system, 
make as much money as you can, but never forget that you have to have your own system. Currently, if you are a member, you're watching this video, or you're probably a member of Hustle University, which is on Facebook. I am using their platform and I'm using YouTube to show you this video. But in case something funky happens, I have my own website. So I have all of your email addresses. So I can say, like, hey, you know, something happened. We're moving over here. It would be very easy to do it logistically. So I am following my own advice, using third party platforms to grow my business, reduce my cost, make my business more efficient. But never forget, you still need to have your own home base somewhere that you grow. And the thing is, you can go crazy and really push and get your Amazon as big as possible. Because the thing is, when you get income, when you get the revenue, you can hire people to do those things that drive you crazy and get them done and become more efficient and make more money. Because what I want you to understand is as an entrepreneur, as a hustler, you got to get to the point where you're pulling yourself out of the business. I can go, um, as you know, as you know, in the group that I'm helping someone that's in the hospital, I can kind of rearrange things and I can still take my laptop to the hospital and still check in and do stuff. I want you to get to the point where you have at least one source of revenue that you really don't have to be there, that you can manage in the midnight hours or wee hours of the morning and still make a lot of money because that gives you freedom to do other stuff, to build other businesses, to make more money or to hang out with your family or to, you know, stay home as a kid and, there's so many things that you can do with this information if you go out and apply yourself. But that's why FBA kicks MF and ass because it's getting extremely hard for the little guy to scale up. Because when, I, when I'm putting your head and, you know, when I mentioned FBA about a year ago and one of the groups like, ah, screw FBA, I'm going to ship my own stuff. You will pay more money using FBA. This is true. But you can send 5, 10, 20 times as much stuff to FBA that they, if it sells, they'll ship, then you can ship it on your own. It, it's literally like hiring a sales team, a fulfillment. It, no, it's not literally. That's what it is. You're hiring a fulfillment team to do your heavy lifting while you're asleep. So going back to when I was in the storage auction business, I spent so much time sourcing. But I will touch on that in a second. Now, this is super, super important. You know, I'm really big on goals. Somewhere on a sheet of paper, a notebook or something, write down, I want to make $5,000 my first month on eBay and Amazon. Write it down and date it. That will, you know, writing down the goal increases the chances of it happening a thousand times more. It's a, it's a thousand percent increase in making that happen. Just for simply writing it down. So, Write that down. And it doesn't matter if you're already on Amazon. It doesn't matter if you're doing FBA because this is going to be your new first month. This is going to be your first month with more direction, a plan, and a, a way to attack this. Now, some more parameters. What you should be doing is 70% of the stuff that you're sourcing, you should be trying to send to FBA. Because I want you to think about this. You got some stuff on eBay because it gives you more room because, you know, you can't sell clothing on Amazon. You have used clothing. And I think you have to jump through some hoops and regulations to open up a retail store on Amazon. So eBay is still the place for that. eBay is still the place for some odd items. But what you can do is increase your income and reduce your workload. Think about that. Say you go out to a garage sale and you need to spend because, you know, in session one, I talked about you need to have 750 to a thousand dollars. When you go to a garage sale armed with the right information, your goal is to spend that 750 or a thousand dollars. Because if you just get the numbers, if you spend a thousand dollars a weekend between, you know, garage sales or going to flea markets and making sure you get screaming deals. And so you spend a thousand and collectively you sell everything. It's twenty two hundred to three thousand. Now, let's look at that. 
So you spend a thousand, you make two to three thousand dollars. In the beginning, you know, it could be like that because you know you have a lot to learn, you make mistakes. But you have a thousand dollars worth of inventory, then you get you get a check, which you go out and buy another thousand. You repeat this process, and before you know it, you've got ten, fifteen, thirty, forty, sixty, a hundred thousand dollars worth of inventory at FBA. Now say um something happens and you you can't go out and source for a month or two. You'll still get paid for a month or two for the work that you did months prior because you have your items that rank well with with sell fast and you also can do long tail items. Stuff like, you know, a rare book that sells for 500 bucks but they sell, you know, every now and then. It's not in your house, it's not in your warehouse, it's in Amazon's FBA's warehouse and you have enough stuff going on that's, you know, selling fast and you have your long tail so so it's paying the bills of storage so you can go out and source more because I don't think I really broke broke it down. I never was the a lone wolf the whole time I was in storage. I, I had a partner from day 1. And a partner from day one, from the day I got out, and we talked, we built, we strategized, we built that business, and it makes a difference. So you can use FBA as your partner. Now, let's go back to the breakdowns. This is pre-owned stuff. This is stuff you get from thrift stores. This is stuff from garage sales. This is stuff you source from Craigslist. Pre-owned stuff. That's what you want. So that's going to be books. That's going to be games. There's going to be certain things. You, you have to do your research. Now, if you're going to do retail arbitrage, for every item you buy, make sure you do a copious amount of research because you can easily go out there and spend your thousand dollars. And when the stuff sells, it might make you 250 profit. You know, you really have to get yourself some tools. Um, I will also say this. If you can, while you're doing your research, because I strongly suggest you go out, you buy stuff, you get this process started, start looking for something that you can turn into a white private label item, something that, you know, you can get the rights to talk to a manufacturer and sell because you're going to make more money because it's almost like you're creating it and you're getting it at a super, super discount. Start looking for ways to get stuff. Now, I'm going to ask a few questions and I've done this. Buying stuff by the pallet, everyone dreams of it. Um, 50% of the time I did that shit, I lost money. 50% of the time I did it, it was like, wow, this is great. And I mean, it, it's a trip. And also, when you get your sources, some they're for good for a few months, then they go to shit after a few months. So be really, really careful with the pallet thing, and you have to get it dirt, dirt, dirt cheap. You have to. You have no choice because you don't know what's going to happen to the stuff in the middle. If it's palletized or shrink wrapped, the core can be crap. You have no idea what you're dealing with. They allow you to break the pallet and look at it. OK, you know, if you can do that. But be really careful with that stuff, because I want you to understand a lot of stuff that's on the pallet is either overruns or returns or there's something wrong. So just be really, really careful with that. And retail arbitrage is, is wide open, but it takes a lot of research. And I would strongly suggest that if you're going to do it, there's a group. I know the guy. He, he doesn't know I'm doing this. His name is Chris Green. It's Scan Power. Go through all of the stuff. Watch, watch his videos. Go through the stuff. Get his book on Amazon. A lot of times it's free. And just do a ton of research on that before you buy anything. Because... You can make money with it. I'm probably going to have my daughter do it. You know, it's a, it's a lesson to learn how to hustle. But be really, really careful because if your person likes to shop, it's awesome. But if you, you know, it, it, it's you can do it online, have stuff shipped to you. You can buy coupons. There's so much to it to be successful. But once again, here's another problem. And I've noticed this because I'm a member of the group. When it's just you sourcing, you're going to run into a ceiling. But the cool thing is, within a year, you can get up to twenty to 50000 bucks within a year per month. 
starting with the number with the 750 to the thousand dollars I gave you. As long as you reinvest your your returns, you can get to that level. That's what I'm talking about. You can do that stuff now because when our best years in the storage auction business was 2006, 2007, 2008, and incidentally, 2009, the year that I got out. And the reason is we had the fulfillment thing going on. Those were our best years ever. I mean, it, it was just like, it was crazy. The only problem we had was my partner and I ran it and we didn't have any lieutenants. That was the biggest mistake we ever made because we didn't have anyone to go out and buy stuff. We didn't have anyone to go through. This. We, we didn't have anybody. So I can tell you it makes a big difference when you have that kind of fulfillment and outsourcing going on and you have a lot of products going through it. Now, our margins were really good because I was ruthless. I told the people 20 percent. I had them sign papers because they used their PayPal account and they cut me a check every week. And I, yes, I had them set up all kinds of stuff. I mean, I had to walk them through some stuff. Some already had it. And I just like cut me a business check every week. Shoot me a 1099. And some people balk. It's like 20 percent. But when they were getting more stuff, because one lady, the first truckload that I sent to her made her more money with her 20 percent than she had made the previous year. She understood she was working their ass off, but it paid the bills. So understand you write your goals down, develop a plan and understand that the resources are out there. The stuff's out there. This is a great time to start researching because it's Christmas, right? And what happens the 26th? Everything goes on fire sale, 50% off, coupons, returns. Starting December 26th, there's going to be so much more product on the market at a screaming sale because after Christmas, sales go down in physical stores. Sales online go up. So the physical stores are going to be chunking stuff, get rid of stuff. It's going to be nuts what's going to happen. So understand. These these are great times, my friends. These are very, very exciting times. Now, let's really, really get back to the sourcing. When you use Amazon FBA and you crank down your eBay business, you can source five to seven days a week. And this is why you want to do it. Say you go out Monday and it's a suck ass Monday. You don't find nothing. You go out Tuesday. It's OK. You find one thing. You go out Wednesday. Mm, nothing. You go out Thursday. Oh, it's pretty good. You find some more stuff. You go out Friday. You find nothing. You go out Saturday. You find more stuff on that one day than you found all week long. Then the next week you go out Monday. It's a ton of stuff on Monday and Tuesday through Friday sucks. See, the thing is sourcing every day gives you an opportunity to make profit every day. Let me make the distinction. It gives you an opportunity. It is not a guarantee. Once you get over that, I went out today. I didn't buy anything. I didn't find everything. Everything looked like crap. Everything looked like shit. Why am I doing this? I ask myself that question many times on the storage auction run. I go out for a week and not buy anything. I didn't see anything. And at that point, I was untrained. I was actually walking past money because I didn't know what I was looking for. But when I started going out, because the first year, I just went to a few auctions and I went to U-Haul's auctions uh, once a month because they gave you five days to clean out the units. And there wasn't a lot of people on the trail because the heavy hitters back then were flea market guys. So they couldn't come out of Saturday. And, you know, even with Sam Chang, there was a few times he didn't show up. Oh, my God. I was getting I got one unit for seven hundred and fifty dollars. It was. Oh, man. There was a Cartier watch in there an automatic and it was still moving. It was glorious unit, glorious. And when I started seven days a week, it forced us to solve problems. Cause you know, when you source that much, you, you have a lot of problems. Cause it's like, okay, I bought these three units today. Uh, I guess I'll be working at 12 tonight. Cause I got it cleaned out. Hey, can I get a gate code? It, it improves your 
innovation and improves your people skills because you have to develop these things to solve these problems. And the more problems that you solve, the more money that you will make. So we were going through this process. I was like, you know, all right, this is my job. You know, you're going to run the shop. You're going to do the eBay stuff because you're more you're, good, you're better at that stuff than I am. I'm going to do the heavy lifting. I'm going to go out and do logistics. I'm going to do procurement. And we got that stuff worked out. We grew year after year because we had a plan and we had infrastructure and we grew our infrastructure. But if you make sourcing your full time job, which you can do with Amazon and FBA, and that's another reason that people like it. Because even if you just want an extra fifteen hundred bucks a month, you could probably find the stuff to do that one day a week. Seriously, one day a week to make an extra fifteen hundred bucks a month. Four days out the month, you know, do the math. So this is the big mistake, and I see it online. People buy then sell versus buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. I want you to envision because I couldn't find anything. That's why I, was, I want you to use your imagination. I want you to imagine two bars. See a bar graph in your head. And there's a red bar and there's a blue bar. The red bar represents your sourcing. The blue bar represents your sales. You want both of them moving at the same speed and direction. As it comes in, it goes out. Which means if you're doing eBay that day, I don't care if it's 8, 9 o'clock, what you do is you take pictures, you do your research, and you list it. And if you don't want it to go off at eight nine o'clock, get yourself something like Ink Frog, or I think eBay lets you, you know, schedule stuff for free now. Don't take my word on that. Do your research. Schedule it to go off the next day, and make sure everything's listed, inventory, and put where it needs to be. You start doing that because what happens is this product creep. People buy. They only list the sexy stuff or the stuff that's hot. And then all of a sudden you got this house that's full of stuff. When I moved, it took me the first time, it took me two years to clean out my house. Two years. Because I wasn't real diligent with it. It's like, okay, they I'll mess with this room. It's I mean, the basement had like 20 bookcases for Amazon. It was stupid. And when I sold the house, and those bookcases were the first thing to go. Some lady from Alabama saw the Craigslist ad and was at my driveway at 530 in the morning with a dually and a trailer. Her and her husband and her kids. She had a consignment store. She saw the shelves. She's like, oh, they're beautiful. I can paint them. She bought all 20. Didn't even didn't even shudder at the price. So this is another part of buying the stuff and getting shelves and everything like as your business grows and you change directions. You can sell that stuff. That's the beautiful thing about this. You can sell that stuff with no problem. So definitely to grow your business, you need to do both at the same time. Now, let's talk about this process. You know, just to make it easy, research, source, list, ship. Either shipping Amazon FBA or shipping after you sell. Uh, that's it. But you want to do it rapidly. You don't want to do research on Monday, <laughs> source on Tuesday, list. Up. No, 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 no. That's real slow. It, research, get it, list it, and ship it. Because you will see that when you consistently do this stuff with a plan, and you know, like I said, a, a plan of action and standard operating procedure, if you will, you will notice results because. What you'll do is train yourself to become more efficient because as you do this, it's like, OK, maybe the, the desk doesn't work. Uh, all right. Well, this room isn't working. Maybe I need to move to the basement. All this stuff is going to start popping up. And the faster you do it, the faster you solve those problems, the more money you're going to make. So definitely look at that whole procedure. Look at how you do this stuff, because just going through this quick little tutorial because, you know, I'm trying to keep it short because I think once it's all done, it'll be like two and a half, three hours. You can literally make three to five thousand a month based on a lot of free resources or very cheap resources, starting with seven hundred and fifty to a thousand dollars a month. Now, how freaking awesome is that? All right. This is Glendon Cameron, and I will see you on the good side.